OpenAI's GPT store is finally out and it's two months delayed, which in the world of tech or specifically AI seems more like a lifetime. But let's find out what it is, how we can leverage it and if and how can we make a profit using it. In today's video, we're going to be diving deep into that new product and we're also going to be discovering one feature, which in my opinion is a lot more of a big deal, especially for small and medium companies out there. Let's jump into ChatGPT and see how it changed over the course of one week. Of course, this is Chat GPT Plus because if you want to use the GPT store, it is only available to Plus users, Enterprise users, and now Team Plan users, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. The Chat GPT website has not changed at all, except for when you click into Explore GPTs, as opposed to what we had in the past, which was just a list of GPTs built by the team at OpenAI or GPTs built by yourself. Now we have an App Store looking page over here, which has a list of different categories ranging from top picks to DALI, writing productivity, education, lifestyle, and a couple of other ones. The main point of interest of that website would be the featured area where OpenAI said that they would list four of their favorite GPTs of that week, and they would be there for that amount of time. And then in each of the categories, we have a list of 12 best GPTs for each of those. So if you scroll through them and click into each one of them, you'll see just that. Similarly to the App Store, you can see that some of those names are big companies that you might recognize, such as Old Trails or Canva, but a lot of those are actually still created by individuals like you and me who have created a GPT to share with the community. Apparently there's 3 million GPTs already there. So perhaps the reason why they decided to delay the release of the GPT store was to wait for all the developers and companies and individuals to create as many GPTs. So they had a library of tools to choose from when creating those categories. And so people would actually get acquainted with how it works and build some really cool stuff. And we are gonna dive into some of those GPTs so that I can show you how they work and some of the cool stuff that people have already created. And this is only week one where we actually get to see other people's works. And having said that, I realize this is complete and utter nonsense that I've just said because you could have reached other GPTs through third party app store looking websites where people would share their GPTs and with a link you could access them. So in all fairness, this GPT store is nothing really revolutionary right now because this functionality was already available if you looked deep enough. However, one difference is that they are planning on monetizing later in Q1. So apparently OpenAI's idea is not to make those GPTs paid for, but as people start using your GPT that you've created, you are gonna get paid for depending on how many people start using it. The details of how much money exactly you're gonna make from this is not yet specified. And unfortunately, from what they've mentioned is that only residents of the US will be getting paid, which is a little surprising, but I guess time will show us how this is gonna work exactly. I'm sure they will find a way to incentivize us to keep working on their tool. From another perspective, this is also a great tool for established companies to dive into that AI world if they haven't so far. So I guess it's a very low stakes entry level for those companies. If you want to create your GPT, please do watch one of my previous videos about custom GPTs in the GPT store, where I explain exactly how to go step by step through the process of creating your own GPT. But at this point, we are gonna look at some of the creations that are already out there on the store. So let's have a look at the number one featured application out there, which is the Old Trails app. So just click into the icon and I'm just gonna click on the first prompt that they gave us, which is which trails near me are dog friendly. Then of course it will ask you for your location because it doesn't know it. And for the last few hours now, I am in Malaga, Spain. So I'm gonna put that in. And now it's going to ask me if I will allow the GPT to communicate with an external source. And that external source is their API. So their online tool for giving me information about those trails. And so of course I will allow that and it will start the action and goes on giving me a very detailed list of trails around my location. And it gives me the length, the elevation gain, a photo of the place so that I get an idea of where I'm headed. And if I click on any of the links, it will probably take me to their website. So I guess it's a good entry point for GPT users to discover new services and start using them. So in all fairness, I didn't really know about old trails and now I kind of want to find out more about them by clicking on those links. There are also a lot of cool different GPTs around DALI and generating images. And one of them I really like is Glibertry art designer, I hope I'm saying it right. It's actually built by a YouTuber who's been working on custom instructions and custom GPTs to generate more advanced images based on your prompts. 
So it takes your prompt and it expands it to use different techniques to make your images pop out. And in this case, it's, it's going to give you four different images every time you ask it for a new one and ideas how to create even more interesting ones. So let's see that in action. Again, I'll, I'll just use one of the predefined prompts. Generate images with an unusual blend of two styles. And so it's generating four different images from you with different styles. And if you look into the prompt that it's showing right there, you can see that it's very detailed and very specific to what it's going to present. And you can see by the quality of the images that those are pretty highly optimized prompts. And also, if you look at that prompt again, you'll see the slash imagine in front of the prompt. And that means that you can actually use this copy paste it and put it into mid journey because that is already predefined prompt that you can use there. So not only is this plugin generating four different images as opposed to what chat GPT would allow you usually to do, which is just generate one image. It actually gives you the prompts for mid journey as well so that you can discover the difference between mid journey and DALI three which is great. And then at the very end, as I mentioned, it gives you four ideas for yet another kind of prompt that you can experiment. So very useful tool. Thank you for creating that. Then let's move on to some online learning. So I'm going to go down into the education category and I will find the AI tutor. And since I'm in Spain, I'm going to ask it to teach me how to actually speak the language. Please structure a beginner's course in Spanish for me. It goes step by step in organizing a whole course for me, lesson by lesson. And then I'm sure if I start asking for each of the lessons, it's going to give me step by step instructions on how to actually learn the language. So that's very useful as well. It also works for other disciplines like maths or science and stuff like that. And then one last thing I wanted to show you in the GPT store is that when you jump into the actual store, in the top right corner, you have two buttons. One is create and one is my GPTs. So if you've previously created GPTs, you can jump in and see how well they're doing. In my previous video, I actually showed you step by step how to create a GPT. Now, I never said it was a great one. I just said it shows you how to create a GPT and it was the Meow AI GPT. And you can see that actually somebody started using it. So. I really hope it's useful because all it does is say meow and purr. But as we go through the list of my GPTs in, in the list, we can realize that they aren't actually all made public. So I definitely won't get monetized for them. So all you need to do is actually just click the little pencil button, customize it, save it as for everyone instead of privately, and you should be all set to go. So that's how hopefully you're going to get paid with custom GPTs at some point in the future as soon as we find out how OpenAI is planning to actually monetize. So at this point, I don't think the GPT store is at its full potential. I'm sure it's going to change over time. It's definitely making things easier for people to start interacting between each other. However, there's nothing new that we couldn't have done in the past using it. So let's see what the future brings. But at this point, I do want to show you one thing which I think is a game changer in a way. And that is the new Teams plan, which you can find if you click on the upgrade plan button. And so you see that you have two plans to choose from. Well, actually four plans, if you think about it, because you have the free plan, which gives you ChatGPT 3.5, and then the plus version, which I am using right now, which is $20 a month. And then we have the team plan, which is the brand new one, and it costs $25 and it has all the features that the plus subscription has, but you can use it within a team of a minimum of two. And OpenAI promises that any of the data that you share with your GPTs will not be stored in their servers. And what that means for, especially for small companies, which are only establishing their rules, is that you have sort of of a live documentation. So for example, if one of your teams is building a marketing campaign, they can store information about how they go around creating a marketing campaign in the first place so that when a new employee jumps in, they don't need to go through a lot of boring documentation. They can just ask a question to a specific marketing GPT and it should give them information about how to create a new campaign and what campaigns are out there already. I think this is definitely going to be a game changer, especially for smaller teams, which didn't afford or didn't see the viable reason to create a chat GPT enterprise um, account because the enterprise account from what I've seen, it doesn't have a set price on the website. It's kind of like a lot of those other tools where you have to, to get in touch with their customer support to find out more about their pricing model. And well, because I don't have a big company, I didn't ask them. But from what I've seen on Reddit and other websites is that it's about $60 per user at a minimum of 150 employees for 12 months. So that's quite a hefty price tag. And now with Teams, um, it's a lot more affordable, especially for small companies. Oh yeah, one more thing is that you have a much bigger context window than with the standard GPT-4 that we have on the Plus plan. So for small companies, 
This is great news. And also you can share GPTs amongst your team, which won't be public to the rest of the store. So they're sort of like AI Slack channels, if you like. Let's see what the future brings with the GPT store. But for now, if I had a small team of employees, I will be quite interested with the team's plan of ChatGPT. I hope to bring some more good news about the GPT store in the near future. But until then, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you later. Bye.